You are now connected. Hello? Hello, how are you? Hello, um, it's, it's Robert, Robert Skinner. I've got literature from the Jehovah's Witness cards. Yeah, hi, uh, how are you? Hello, h how, how are you? Um, thank you. Um, I, I was wondering if it's possible to help. I don't know if it's, you're busy at the moment. I'm just curious about Jesus' manifested fleshly bodies. Um, I was given a photocopy of Insight in the Scriptures, page 786, which says that Jesus rose as a spirit, but then after his resurrection, he manifested fleshly bodies. Okay, right. Um, what I wanted to know is, did he remain as Michael the Archangel in your literature when he manifested these fleshly bodies, or did he stop being Michael the Archangel each time he manifested a fleshly body? Like when he um, appeared outside the tomb and was, and was mistaken for the gardener, did he stop being Michael when he did that, or was he still Michael, you see? Well, why are you asking? Um, well, I've, I've been reading your literature, and I'm trying to understand it, and I find it a little little difficult to understand. So I, I'm trying to understand what is the view on the resurrection? Because it's kind of central, the resurrection. Yeah, in what, in what way are you of the resurrection, though? What's that going to do with Michael the Archangel? Um, well, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I'm just reading your literature. Um, your your literature, I mean, co correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but it says that Jesus rose to spirit life. That's page 46 of what the Bible really teach. So Jesus yeah. became Michael the Archangel at the resurrection. I think I've got that right. That's what you teach. Is that right? Yeah, I, I believe so. I'd have to have a look at the, uh, the, the uh, what, what, you're, what you're reading, though. That's, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, but I think you do teach that he rose not in the same body. Because, you see, when I used to attend church 10 years ago, I, I gave up about 10, 10 years ago, we were taught that the resurrection was that Jesus rose in the same body that he died in. But I think your literature says that he rose in a different body. He, he rose as Michael, a spirit creature. Well, you have to ask yourself, are there any capabilities in heaven of being bodies? Um, uh, um, what... there's, there's no, I, I think a lot of people get, get confused by a lot of revelation specifically and things like that. So when, when, you, uh, when, when you think about it, there's no, there's no bodies in heaven, are there? It's, it's, a, it's a spirit realm. I'm, I'm not talking about heaven. I haven't, I haven't mentioned that, that once. Um, I'm simply trying to understand your teachings. I'm reading your literature. And I'm trying to understand what you believe. Now, as I understand it, you teach that Jesus rose as Michael the Archangel. Have I got that right? Um, yeah, I believe so, yes. Yeah, and, and that uh, and the... In where the that's just one of Christ's um, many, many titles, isn't it? And, and he's sort of one of those things that... Is, is many, many titles, um, and, it, and they get applied to Jesus at, at, um, at, at different points. So, uh, yeah. Um, I, I was then given a photocopy of one of your books called Insight on the Scriptures. Yeah, that's online as well. Yeah, um, on jw.org where I've been, and I've looked at the um, um, book when I had internet access. Um, when the library was open. Um, now, that book says on page 786 that post-resurrection, this Michael, the spirit creature, then manifested fleshly bodies. So outside the tomb, he manifested a fleshly body and was mistaken for the gardener. Uh, on the Emmaus Road, he was walking with his disciples, and that was another fleshly, a different fleshly body that was manifested. Um, in the enclosed room... In Luke twenty four thirty nine, when he says, Behold, it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. That's again an, yet another manifestation in yet a different fleshly body. I'm, I'm just trying to understand, have I got that right, that you believe he manifested? I'd have, I'd have to go and have a check on that myself. Well, that, well, that's absolutely fine. I mean, do you want to, have you got my number? Do you want me to give you my number? Has it come up on your phone? Yes, yeah, um, no, no. It, it, it was there about two minutes ago, and it's now gone. I was trying to write it down. Right. I, I'll give you the number. My name is Robert Skinner, if you've got a pen. Yeah, that's fine. Um, 
Jehovah's name remains. Have you, have you ever been associated with Jehovah's Witnesses? I've before, never been. Right? A, I've never been a Jehovah's. I've never been a Jehovah's Witness, but I have phoned a few Kingdom halls in Swansea because no one seems to be able to answer this question. I'm reading your literature, and uh, no one can really help me. If somebody, where are you? Where, where are you? Um, where, where are you from? Where are you? Uh, where do you live? Where, 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 oh, I don't have to give you my my home address. Um, no, no, I, I don't. I, I just. I, are you in Swansea yourself? No, no, I'm outside of Swansea. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, yeah. Have you got the number. So, what what was your objective in in sort of um thought, uh, finding out about this? Well, I want to serve God. I want to be faithful to God and you know I'm getting on a bit now I want to you know be be faithful to God for the years that mm. I've got left uh, the resurrection is 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 the central doctrine of the Christian faith uh, Paul Paul says that you know our, our whole faith is in vain if we get the resurrection wrong um, what, what I really want to know though is when Jesus in your literature you say he manifested these fleshly bodies OK, did he remain as Michael, the archangel, when he f manifested these fleshly bodies or did he stop being Michael when he manifested these fleshly bodies? For instance, did he rise as Michael, the archangel? Then outside the tomb, he stopped being Michael, became the body of the gardener, body number two. Then he became Michael again. Then he went to the Emmaus Road. Then he stopped being Michael. Then he became body number three. Then he stopped being body number three and became Michael again. Then he went to the enclosed room. Then he became body number four, which says, um, it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, you see I have. Then he became Michael again. Then he went to the Sea of Galilee. Then he became body number five. Then he became Michael again. Then he went to Jerusalem for the ascension. Then he became body number six, preached to the crowd. Then he became Michael again. Then he was bodily ascended up into heaven. That's That's the first position, which I think you will agree is kind of ridiculous yeah michael my, uh, this michael the archangel is just the title though um spirit creature then your 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 yeah. book what does the bible really teach page 46 yeah. says the father resurrected him to spirit life so where yeah. i say michael a spirit creature yeah did did jesus swap between being human and a spirit creature post-resurrection numerous times or did he remain as Michael when he manifested those numerous fleshly bodies, in, according to your literature? Because if the latter view is true, that he remained as Michael, then the question is, did that Michael indwell that physical body, rather like the traditional Christian view of the um soul or spirit indwelling the body which again I, i've read in your literature it calls it babylonish false doctrine of the soul the immortal soul inhabiting the body it's from babylon according to your literature so if if jesus remained as this spirit creature michael whilst at the same time he manifested these fleshly bodies then either that spirit creature indwelt the physical body which is what you call the Babylonish false doctrine of the soul as taught by Christendom. Um, or if he didn't indwell that body and they're both not omnipresent because Michael, the spirit creature, is not omnipresent and those fleshly bodies aren't omnipresent. Well, if Michael doesn't indwell those fleshly bodies, then you're teaching, Nest then you're teaching what's called Nest Nest Nestorianism which is basically a teaching that there's two different Jesuses. There's one Jesus who's a spirit Jesus, and in a different location you have another Jesus who's a fleshly Jesus. So I'm, I'm just trying to find out. I mean, there's a couple of things I'm looking at. I'm, I'm looking at the Trinity as well. I'm looking at your teaching on the Holy Spirit, and your teaching on all governments being satanic uh, of the devil. Um, your book, What Can the Bible Teach Us?, page 33, paragraph 11 says which kind of shocked me. So these are the sort of things I'm looking at at the moment. Um, what I'd normally do, if you're not from Swansea, I'd normally get somebody locally to... Um, and what we'd do is set up a... At the moment, obviously, we couldn't knock on your door. We'd set up a Zoom conference. I, I don't have the internet. 
Uh, until the library is open, I don't have internet access, but I do have this telephone number that I've given you and I can speak to it. It doesn't have to be you. If you don't want to speak to me, that's fine. Maybe you could pass my details on to somebody else at Swansea Central. But I, I, I thought that somebody might be able to help with these with these questions. What sort questions. of area do you live in, then? Sorry? What sort of area do you live in? I live outside of Swansea. I, I don't live in Swansea. Okay. No worries. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, we don't have to meet and uh, I'm, I'm quite happy just to speak on the phone. But can you see the importance of this question? I mean, the resurrection is central to the Christian faith. Yeah, obviously. And you've either got three three doctrines. You must hold to one of those three doctrines. If Jesus rose as a spirit creature and then manifested these fleshly bodies, then the first position is a flipping doctrine where this Jesus flips between being a spirit creature, human, spirit creature, human, spirit creature, human. He's, he's flipping continually between the two, which is ridiculous. The second position is if Jesus remains as Michael, the spirit creature, whilst at the same time he manifests these bodies, then as neither is omnipresent, that Michael's not omnipresent and these fleshly bodies aren't omnipresent, as in, as in Christian uh, right. Uh, then what you what you then have is you either have Michael indwelling those fleshly bodies, which is very similar, not the same, but it's similar to the Christian doctrine of the immortal soul or spirit indwelling a physical body, which you call Babylonish false doctrine. Or worst of all, you end up teaching Nestorianism, the idea that there's two Jesuses, because if Michael's not omnipresent and if the fleshly bodies are not omnipresent and Michael doesn't indwell these fleshly bodies then they exist simultaneously in two different locations you end up with two Jesuses the first Jesus is Jesus the spirit creature and the second Jesus is Jesus the flesh and and he does say in Luke twenty four thirty nine, um, behold it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit doth not have flesh and bones as you see I have he says it is I myself he doesn't say this is a manifestation of me you know I, I could I could watch um you know, a famous actor on the TV. When I watch um, Tom Tom Hanks on the TV, it's not Tom Hanks inside the TV. It's a sort of image of Tom Hanks. Um, but it's not Tom Hanks inside the television. Well, Jesus doesn't say this is a, a manifestation of, of me or an image of me in Luke twenty four thirty nine. He says it's I myself. So that physical being standing before them in the enclosed room in Luke twenty four thirty nine is Jesus himself. But if Jesus is simultaneously at the same time existing as Michael, the spirit creature, which I think is your position, I really think this is your real position, then I don't think you've really thought it through that you're actually teaching Nestorianism. You're teaching a two Jesus doctrine, which is something that's um, very pertinent to me because I used to be a oneness Pentecostal back in the 1980s when I lived in London for almost a year I was in a, a black Pentecostal church that was oneness it means that they deny the trinity they're Pentecostals who are anti-trinitarian and they taught Nestorianism they didn't call it that but that's what they taught and oneness or the apostolic movement Jesus only this movement I was connected with, it's its taking over Pentecostalism around the world, about a quarter of all classical Pentecostals now, especially in Asia and South America, reject the Trinity. So it's tens of millions of people. It's far larger than Jehovah's Witnesses uh, and the Mormons combined, far larger. And um, when I read your literature, it reminded me of my time in the oneness back in the 1980s, that although they didn't mean to, they ended up teaching a two Jesus doctrine. The first Jesus is the when Jesus was baptized. Uh, it's the man in the water. That's the first Jesus. And the second Jesus would be the father or the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. So, you know, I think that really is your position. I think you're teaching Nestorianism. And I just wondered if you or somebody else might be able to help. And another thing that really, really puzzled me is what can the Bible teach us? Page thirty-three. You familiar with the book? Uh, yeah, but not off the top of my head like that. 
Well, it, it says at the end of paragraph 11 that all governments belong to Satan. That's an exact quote. Quote, all governments belong to Satan. Yes. But wouldn't that be demonising the British government and the Crown? I mean, I'd be very unhappy with that. Well, what, what, what have, you, have you ever read um, Matthew 4? Yes, but, but Matthew 4 has got nothing to do with the Queen of England and the British Crown. Matthew 4 is before Jesus' death, burial and resurrection when he defeated Satan. Satan wasn't victor when Jesus was crucified. He was defeated. Colossians 2, I think it's 13 to 15, talks about Christ defeating Satan through the cross, triumphing over Satan in it, meaning the cross. I, I mean, I, I mean, Matthew four is a different context. Even if you're right, even if every, um, you know, even if you have a point that in some way Satan uh, controls various people in Matthew four, Matthew four doesn't necessarily apply today, and you can't simply take Matthew four and apply it to. Uh, world leaders or or government leaders who you don't happen to like that that's kind of inconsistent but i mean your your book um hang on i've got another one of your books here um yeah um daniel's prophecy uh right page 141 paragraph 27 the holy ones persecuted by the small horn Dash, the Anglo-American world power, are Jesus' spirit-anointed followers on earth. Right? Yeah. Well, the small horn in biblical prophecy is an obvious reference to the coming, the beast, the beast of the book of Revelation. The Hollywood movies call him the Antichrist, but his proper title is the beast. Um, he's got a, a buddy with him who he works with him called the false, false prophet. We know that they haven't appeared on the scene yet because one of the things the beast does is he doesn't allow people to buy or sell unless they have a mark in their hand or in their forehead. And the Greek preposition in, n, epsilon nu, is, is used to say that the mark is not on the hand, it's actually in the hand. So we know that the beast hasn't arrived yet. Now, um... The small horn who displaces three other horns would be one form of terminology used for this beast or, or antichrist, as the Hollywood movies call him. But your book here, page 141, the holy ones persecuted by the small horn dash the Anglo-American world power. You're applying this to the British and the American governments, which includes the crown. And, you know, you're simply reading that into the text. And I think it's wrong to insult a dear lady, you know, the Queen, by applying this verse about the Antichrist to her. You, you know, what earth makes you think that you can insult Her Majesty the Queen by saying that she is the fulfilment of this Bible prophecy of the Antichrist? It's highly insulting to a dear lady in her 90s. You know, I, I find this very insulting and 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 do you know the reason for this? Well, well, do you know why you teach this? Isn't that Bible teaching? No. Judge Rutherford was put in prison in nineteen eighteen. He spent nine months in prison. And in 1919, nine months later, they quitted him and let him out of prison with, uh, I think there were eight Watchtower senior officers who were put in prison at the time. So when he, when he came out of prison, he had an absolute chip on his shoulder as big as Mount Everest. And he was out to get America and Britain. Anyway, Robert, I've got to go now. I've got a call to be on. Okay. Okay? All right, um, you've got my number. I'll... I'll, I'll... If you could help oh. with my my question about um, Michael, I'd be and the manifested bodies, be grateful. Thank you very much. Okay, no worries. Okay, bye. Okay. Bye.